Check it, check, check, one, two, check it, check. Lights, camera, action. This entire episode is going to go mostly in different directions than I intended it to because I made the mistake of getting on the internet and seeing things and going, you know what, I want to fucking talk about that instead of what I was going to talk about. Oh, you scream, shout, whine, cry, snivel, piss, and moan. You shove your opinion up your ass that we Obama's cock has something to keep it company. Don't forget, my friends and my enemies, the ever-present, the most likely third possibility, you are wrong and I am right. So fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And fuck the horse you rode in on. And for those of you who are into that shit, fuck the horse that's fucking you. I still remember all these years ago when I read about this thing, how the guy, where was it? I forget now. This guy died. He was having sex with a horse, and the horse fucking him killed him. Oh my god. The Democrats lose one more voter. That must have been a really sad day for them. Greetings, I am the Great One himself, the founder of the Cynical Libertarian Society. Ten fucking years of podcasting. Ten fucking years. Have I mentioned lately that I've been podcasting for ten fucking years? Fuck you. Fuck you. And fuck you. I am. I already said that. I am the Great One himself. This is Stating the Obvious Podcast. It's the weapons platform from which I launched the cruise missile, my intellect. Normally I say that so at times with the special effects of the cruise missile launching. But you know what? Who gives a shit? Anyhow. Uh, what else, Randy? What do I need? Randy! In the control room is the lovely and adorable Randy. She has seen and not heard the way a woman should be. And she looks really good when she bends over, especially when she's wearing skirts like she is today. And what else? Yes, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the interwebs. C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C on the Twitter version. Send us email. God, that's dog spelled backwards. God at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com. Before I forget, I'd like to say Aaron Clary, fuck you. And after all the free advertising I've given you, <laughs> there's a fake laugh for you. Anyway, um, when was it? Yesterday, I noticed a spike in my traffic over at the website. And I traced it back. Aaron Clary, Captain Capitalism, captaincapitalism.blogspot.com, who I fucking have, especially here lately, I've been talking about Aaron a lot more just because he's been writing a lot of good shit and I'm reading another one of his books, blah, blah, blah. Anyhow... The point is, Captain Capitalism mentioned me in one of his post updates about podcasts that you should listen to. So anyhow, thanks Aaron, I appreciate the mention, I really do. And thanks for sending people my way, hopefully I get a few more new listeners. Not that I really give a shit for any of you new to the... I saw in my statistics that a number of you went to the introductory episode. See, again, I like it when I get intelligent people because normally people come to me and they send me some fucking email about what an idiot or something or just what the fuck ever. And I'm like, dude, you know, if you would have just listened to the introductory episode like I told you to, like you're supposed to, you would understand this is not a fucking current events show. Okay? If you listen to the introductory episode, you would understand that I use a lot of fucking bad language. If you listen to the introductory show, you would understand that I don't give a fuck about your feelings. Or if you listen to episode 150, Fuck You and Fuck Your Feelings, one of my favorite episodes, you'll understand. I, so don't send me a fucking email or a comment on YouTube about, you said bad words. Fuck you. Fuck you. This is just one of my biggest contentions with statists, you know, say, oh, he said a bad word. Okay, let's see. You support people who murder other humans. I'm the terrible person here. All right. Anyway, as Randy is pointing out, I have a lot that I think I'm going to talk about and none of this has anything to do with it. So anyway, welcome followers from followers of Captain Capitalism who may be stumbling across this for the first time. And thanks, Cappy.
and I'll send you a bill for all the free advertising I've done for your books, Worthless and Bachelor Pad Economics. No, I'm just kidding. All right, coffee is getting cold. It's almost done. Where's my shit? All right, went trail running this morning. Woke up this morning, had this crick in my neck. Holy shit, I almost wussed out. And yes, this is relevant. Just don't give me that look. This is fucking relevant. Down, woman, down. And <laughs> I went trail running this morning. It was good. God damn, so you know what I gotta do? My problem with trail running is that, so I'm focused on the trail running, I'm running up the mountain, and I'm listening to Cato Daily Podcast from like a year ago, because I'm way behind on listening to podcast. And, oh God, there was something on Cato that I was going to mention in passing. I can't remember what it was now. I'm running up the mountain. And I'm vaguely aware of this bicyclist coming towards me. Uh, so I'm trucking up the mountain. And you know, now, in the, the law, you know, the state, the law. And here, you, uh, you fucking statist. You're so fucking stupid. I'm so fucking sick of statist saying to libertarians and anarcho capitalists how immature we are, how we're not grown up and not mature. You're the fucking immature people. You need the government to pass a fucking law to explain to you how to interact with another human when you're out on the fucking running trail on the side of a goddamn mountain. You think I'm fucking immature because I think it's wrong to kill people? God damn it, you fucking statist. You are scum. I swear to God, I'll just say it again. If there are a way for me to do it, if it were physically possible for me to take a fucking knife and slit the throat of every statist on the planet Earth, I would fucking do it. That's how much I despise you fucking cocksuckers for your immaturity, your stupidity, and your fucking selfishness. So the law, the government... The law says that bicyclists have to yield to people on foot. Now, I, being an adult who can make my own fucking decisions, don't really give a fuck about the law. And usually, if I'm on the mountain trail, which I am very often, and a bicyclist is coming my way, I'll get the fuck out of their way. Because it's a lot easier for me as a person on foot running to stop and start and it's a lot more difficult for a bicyclist and we're not talking about like a little jeep trail here. I'm talking about this is serious up the side of a mountain rocks I've tried to mountain bike up this particular trail before it nearly fucking killed me this this way beyond my skill level for mountain biking so I mean this is badass terrain this ain't just a little fucking dirt trail on flat ground I'm talking about so I get the fuck out of their way because it's a lot harder for somebody on a bicycle to stop and start. And see, that's called, that's called maturity, is being able to look at somebody else's situation and say, you know what, that person is in a more difficult situation than I am, why don't I fucking yield to them? Instead of the law, the government, the rich white people who run the city of Fort Collins having to tell me how to fucking interact with other humans. I don't need that because I'm not a fucking child like you little fucking shit statist are. Okay? Why don't you all go fucking kill yourselves? I really fucking hate statist. My hatred for you, it knows no bounds. It really doesn't. It really fucking knows no boundaries. How much I despise those of you who just want to suck the cock of the government, just swallow as much cum as you can, and just do whatever the fuck the law says. Remember, how did the fucking Jews get in concentration camps and get exterminated? Because of the law. Because there are lots of people who fucking did what the law told them to do. Wow, that's the law. Fuck you. Anyway, I got the fuck out of the way of the bicyclist because I'm a goddamn adult and I can make my own fucking decisions. As the bicyclist went by and she said, good morning, I said, good morning. As she went by, I realized that she was pretty fucking hot. And then she was gone because she was going downhill and she's going at a pretty good clip and there's no way I was going to catch her. I had a, I, I think, I got to like, I don't know, if I was Spider-Man, I could use my little web and I could like shoot out and pfft, snag her and like, yank her back or something. Anyway, I missed the hottie on the bicycle because she was going downhill really fast. What? Yes. 
that's completely relevant. Okay, see if, now here's the thing. Now this is where Roosh, we talked about Roosh a couple episodes ago. Roosh, who is a statist, who wants the government to make your decisions for you so that you don't make any mistakes, because God forbid you have any fucking personal responsibility. I mean, just reading Roosh, parroting the same fucking argument that feminists have is absolutely fucking hilarious, right? I'm terrified of responsibility. I want the government to give me free birth control. It's like, oh, great. So when did Roosh join the feminist? Anyway, now, if I were a fucking pussy like Roosh who needed the government to wipe my ass for me because I was a statist, I would have not yielded to the bicycle. I would have forced her to yield to me, which means she would have had to stop her bicycle as I went around her, and then I would have had more time to interact with her. And who knows, man, I could be having sex with her right now. So if only I were a good little statist instead of a fucking adult, I could have met this girl. But no, no, I'm a fucking adult. I got out of her way because she had a larger burden. You know, it's like the policy. We, whoever has the heaviest load has the right of way. Right, if you're in a warehouse or something, whoever has the heaviest load has the right of way. <laughs> we need a law that explains it again. That's it. It's like I was looking through some of the old episodes of Stating the Obvious yesterday. Yes, I know I'm running out of time. Thank you, dear. And, <laughs> and the fuck was I going to say? Oh, yes. There was many, many moons ago here in Fort Collins, there was this debate about bicyclists stopping at stop sites. There's a lot of debate in Fort Collins about bicyclists because we have a lot of bicycles here. And it's one of those things that this city loves to obsess about, like smokers as we're incrementally banning smoking. You can't smoke outside now and all this other shit. And there was this debate about bicyclists having to stop at stop signs or could they treat them as a yield sign if there's no traffic and this one fucking just gayer than fuck little shit that i know unfortunately that i know wrote this column on the internet where he was all like well but people have to stop at stop signs because it's social contract and all this other shit and and he said that you know, if more than if what happens when two people get to the stop sign at the same time and then you can't figure out who's supposed to go first, right? I mean, this is what statists always default to. Well, what happens in your life if something happens and you're just not smart enough to figure out what you're supposed to do? Because I mean, it's really fucking hard. If two people come to a stop sign at the same time. Oh my God, how can you not figure out who's going to go first, right? You got two people on the trail. One's going up, one's going down. How are they going to figure out between the two of them who has the heaviest burden and this who should yield to who? Oh my God, it's so complicated complicated and that's why you people need the state to make all your fucking decisions for you because you're so goddamn dumb you're so fucking stupid you can't figure out how to utilize a fucking four-way stop sign you can't figure out how to yield to another person on the fucking hiking trail that's how goddamn dumb you are but oh democracy that's why you should be allowed to vote right because you're so fucking stupid you can't do anything for yourselves. You need Obama's cock in your mouth to feed you cum so that you stay alive while he reaches over and bends and wipes your ass for you while you're shit. But somehow or another, you're so goddamn fucking smart, you should be allowed to vote and make political decisions that affect not just everybody in the nation, but everybody on the planet Earth. I can't figure out why I hate statists. Is it their immaturity? Is it their stupidity? Is there that their incompetence? I don't know. I'm baffled by the absolute. I'm absolutely fucking baffled about why I want to slit the throat of every fucking statist on the planet Earth. I can't figure this shit out. Oh, oh wait, is it because all of you would love to kill me just because I don't want to obey your fucking stupid laws? I don't know. I can't figure this shit out. Baffled. All right, let's move on. I've ranted about statism. Back, back. I haven't done that much lately because I've been slacking off. I have. All right. Nope. I'm look. Hang on. I'm looking for shit. I know it's here. Eh. There it is. Fucking computers. Oh my god. Computers. 
Okay, you have heard, this has lately been one of the more popular podcast episodes on the site too. My episode entitled something along the lines of Apple and Mac users are fucking idiots. Where I just, I make fun of, anyway, they are, okay. Because one of the things they always say, but my, my Macintosh, it's so easy to use. It's so easy. I'm in the library the other day, for those of you who are young, the library is this place they have books. Books are these things that they're printed on dead tree. I, it's a long story, don't worry about it. Nobody cares, none of you are fucking smart enough to read anyhow because you're medicated. I'm in the library. And between looking at the cute girls, there were a couple of them. I was in there for long. And I saw there was a book on the shelf about how to migrate from using Windows to using an Apple computer. And this book, I'm not bullshitting you, this book was like 700 something pages. Now I have a question for you fucking Apple cocksuckers who all, you all hate corporations, but you sure can suck the fuck out of Apple's cock, right? I have a question for you. If your Mac computer is so fucking easy to use, why do you need a 700 fucking page book to use it? Like, holy shit. Remember, people who say, I use Macintosh because it's so easy to use, are people who aren't smart enough to use Windows. And I can train a fucking monkey to use Windows. You double click on the fucking icon. Jesus Christ. You, you, anybody can even learn Linux. It's not that fucking hard. Okay. Hang on, I need to make a note. Rip on Mac users. Did it. I... I don't do show notes anymore before the show because I never talk about what's in the show notes, so there's no point. All right, speaking of things I wasn't going to talk about, talked about Roosh lately. I was going to talk about Roosh some more. But then I saw in my feed this article. This is over on Return of King's website. It's Return of bleh, returnofkings.com. And this is by Matt Forney. I've talked about Matt Forney numerous times in the past. I've read some of his stuff. I still recommend his book. What the hell is it called? The... I have it somewhere. It's, it's this thing. It's printed on a dead tree. What the fuck did my... Yeah. I organized the bookshelves again lately. And what that translates into is that I don't know where the fuck anything is anymore. Because every time I clean up, it just ends up being a nightmare. And I can't find any of my books. Yes! Confessions of an Online Hustler by Matt Forney. It's a book he wrote. It's about starting up your own blog and website and moving towards making money and all this other stuff. It's a really good book if you don't know anything about this stuff because it's very introductory level, but it doesn't have a lot of technical bullshit that you can figure out on your own. But it, it explains enough about the technical side for you to get started. But more importantly, he tells you about strategies and modal, uh, not modalities, methodologies for building an audience and yada, 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 so forth. So it's a great book. I do recommend buying it. You can get Amazon. You get Kindle. He's got the second edition is out now. Anyway, Matt Forney wrote this post. I want to read this and respond. Randy, how am I on time? Now that I've fucked around for good 19 minutes. Perfect. We're 19 minutes into the podcast. We can get started now. That is exactly how it works if you're new around here. Okay. And then, dude, hey, don't let me forget. I want to do this for the closing. Great. Don't let me forget. No, warn me like eight minutes out. I, well, I know it won't do any good. <laughs> well, look, if you don't warn me, we're going to go over. So there, that's a threat, woman. All right. Matt Forney's article at Return of Kings, returnofkings.com. Why men going their own way is no way for men to go. The creeping cult of male loserdom. 
Speaking of Aaron Clary, Aaron Clary has also addressed this various, this various, this same topic a couple of times. He's done at least a couple of videos on it, and I think he's written about it too. Anyway, here we go. In the past few months, men going their own way, MIGTO, has completed its devolution from a sensible philosophy of masculinity into a cult for lonely virgins. While I never identified as MIGTO myself, the old guard MIGTO blog No Ma'am, yes, there is actually a website called No Ma'am, some those of you may remember No Ma'am from Married with Children, which was a really fucking funny series for the first, what, three or four years, and then just went to shit. Thank God they killed it when they did, because it was only getting worse. Anyhow, if I remember, I will be putting links in the show notes to No Ma'am. The Old Guard blog, No Ma'am, whose owner, Rob Fetters, has become so embarrassed by what MGTOW has become that he's wiped almost all mention of it from his site, was a huge influence on my thinking. Indeed, it was my introduction to anti-feminist thought in general. The men who created the... Uh, hey, wait, hold on. So anyhow, let me back up and throw in my commentary. I agree. It, somebody, speaking of Aaron Clary, I think it was Aaron Clary who said this first. Somebody pointed out that just as feminism started with some good intentions and then quickly devolved into this group of whiny little snots. That's not how this person put it, but that's how I'm putting it. The MIGTO thing is has done it is. MIGTO is the equivalent to men of feminism for women. It really is. It started off as something that probably had some value and yada yada yada. But as soon as it happened, it, it as soon as it happened, the fucking male versions of the feminist, the fucking um what do you call virgin toes, as Aaron Cleary calls them, which I love that. The virgin toes, as soon as they saw this, just leapt on it. Just like with feminism, you know, as soon as the fat, ugly women who couldn't get a date saw feminism, they jumped on it and turned it into what they wanted. It's just like the Republicans are doing right now. I've bitched about this before, you've heard me do it. The Republicans are looking at the word libertarian and libertarianism and they're jumping on that and they're trying to twist it to their own desires. This is why I love it when I listen to people who talk, call themselves libertarians and they start talking about how shit should be illegal and the government should do this. It's like, well, okay, obviously, you know, you people have already corrupted the fuck out of the word libertarian, which is why, as I always say, I'm actually an anarcho capitalist, even though the name of the society is the Cynical Libertarian Society, because I don't want to change it, yada, yada, so forth and so on. But the point is, you know, libertarians started off good idea, then the Republicans fucking got a hold of it, started fucking it up. Feminism, not necessarily a bad thing for the first three or four weeks that it existed, but then the fat women got a hold of it and fucked it up. The MGTOW, not necessarily a bad thing for the first three or four weeks that it existed. But then all the pizza-faced, video game-playing virgins with no social skills got a hold of it, and now they're fucking it up. All right, back to reading. The men who created the MGTOW philosophy a decade ago, Zed, Ra Ragnar, Rob Fetters, etc., were learned men who had seen the horrors of second and third wave second and third wave feminism firsthand. They rode motorcycles. That was me moving the microphone. They rode motorcycles, banged girls, and read books, sharing their findings via blogs and forums. MGTO was deliberately conceived as an anti-movement in response to the impotence of men's, right act men's rights activists and the marriage strike, the most recognizable part of modern MGTO bleeding, wasn't even mentioned in the original MGTO manifesto. There's also, let me mention, there's a lot of... There's an, Matt Forney has in this post a large number of links. Which may be worth your investigation to follow some of this to deeper sources. Anyway, that's me getting... All right. As it exists now, MGTOW has become a lonely hearts club for the 
refuse of the male species. Not only are most virgins going their own way personally repellent losers, their philosophy is completely wrong-headed. Men going their own way will never appeal to anything more than the rejects of American society because it's a philosophy that denies the fundamental nature of human beings. I'm thinking. Hold on. Okay, yes. The thing I want to... Okay. I have on my list something I have to be sure I talk about, and I thought I had missed my opportunity to talk about it. I'm always missing opportunities. It's like when girls on bicycles go past you downhill too fast. If you're not fucking paying attention, you miss your opportunity. That's why you have to fucking pay attention. And obey the law. Don't get out of the way of the bicyclist. The law says the bicyclist should yield for you. You ever been hit by a moving bicycle going downhill at a high speed? Oh, that would fucking hurt. Anyway, back to reading. One common talking point of MGTOWs is that their beliefs represent a completely new take on masculinity. Oh. Ooh. Eh, never mind. All right, I have to stop looking out the window. Mm, hang on. All right, I know nobody cares. For any, anybody new to the show, the recording studio has a window, and the window overlooks a place where a lot of college kids congregate. And by college kids, I mean young girls wearing shorts who are bending over. And that's what I'm getting distracted. I'm clearly not a fucking MGTOW. Because anyway, all right. One com one common <laughs> talking point of MGTOWs is there is that their belief represents a completely new take on masculinity, the rejection of male subservience to women or pussy worship, as the perma virgins call it. <laughs> perma virgins. <laughs> Virgins. I love that word. <laughs> virgins. Right. Uh, Aaron Cleary's being annoyed right now because I'm laughing. Fuck you, Aaron. And anyway, <laughs> the Perma Virgins. <laughs> that sounds like a great name for a punk band. Ladies and gentlemen, the Perma Virgins. All right, anyway. The fuck was I? This shows how historically illiterate and arrogant they are. Spiritual and philosophical movements focused on celibacy and the denial of base urges have a long pedigree in human history, from early Buddhism and Jain Jainism in India to the Catholic priesthood, monast monastic orders such as the Trappist and quasi-Christian offshoots such as the Shakers. While it might inflate the bladed ego, bloated ego of the average MGTO to be compared to the great religious movements of past and present, MGTO fails even on that front. Monks and nuns don't take the vows because they're angry at not being able to get a date. They choose their lifestyles because they want to become closer to God. Aside from avoiding women in actuality being rejected by them, Virgin toes indulge in every vice available to them, from Cheetos to video games to masturbation. Their lifestyles are the very opposite of self-control. By the way, up to this point, there's nothing I disagree with here. And this is... Forney comes towards... <laughs> I said comes. Comes towards something that I think is relevant here in all philosophical discussions is the difference between being reactionary and being I, I don't really have a phrase for this in, in mind right this second but when you are creating a belief system 
when you are constructing a belief system, when you are analyzing, attempting to validate or invalidate a belief system, an ideology if you want to call it that, you can either be reactionary and you'll find out that that's what most systems are, or you can operate from first principles. Okay. Now, the virgin toe movement is a reactionary movement. Here's what I mean by that, because I want to give some examples of these things to illustrate what I'm trying to express. Because again, I think this is really fucking important. As you're going through life, you're trying to decide what's right, what's wrong, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, what should I be doing, what should I not be doing. You have to be able to evaluate things back. I mean, again, you can be a statist. You can sit in there and say, well, I want free birth control and Obama is going to give me free birth control, so I'm going to vote for him. I mean, you can be a typical statist. You can do everything from selfishness, and you can be completely unable to understand why people like myself hate you and want to slit your throat, right? You can be that person. It's totally okay. You can be a worthless fucking childish piece of shit because in our country today, that's what most people want. This is a democracy. We have bred the stupid people until the vast majority of the population is so goddamn dumb they can't wipe their own asses and that's what they want but you listening to this podcast if you're still here if you've made it this far you might have a little bit fucking higher standards you might want something better out of your life than just being a fucking dumb fuck who every four years goes and fucking sucks on a democrat cock and votes for the democrat so that you can keep getting welfare benefits okay you might be better than that if you are, you need to have a methodology for evaluating belief systems and worldviews that come in your direction. And you're looking at these things, do I adopt this? Does this make sense? Yada, yada, yada. Okay, let me shut the fuck up and get some examples. The virgin toes. The virgin toes are reactionary. As Forney is pointing out here, as other people pointed out, most of the virgin toes Again, I'm not talking about the first three weeks when MIGTO existed and it made sense. Most of the virgin toes are men who can't fucking interact with women. They're virgins. They've never gone on a date. They don't know how to talk to girls. I mean, I'm not saying I'm the fucking... I'm not roosh when it comes to picking up girls, but at least I can fucking talk to a woman without pissing on myself, okay? Except when she's going past me on a bicycle really fast. Wait, maybe, no, pissing on myself actually would not have helped. If anything, she would have bicycled away even faster. Eh, hey, never mind. That's just, shit goes through my brain, man. It's like, yeah, see, that's what normal men think. Hmm, I want to meet a girl. I should piss on myself. Okay, maybe that's my problem. Anyway. <laughs> the virgin toes. It's a reaction, okay? We've got these virgins. They have no social skills. They've never gone out with a girl. They've never had sex with a girl. And so they have this reaction to this. It's like, my situation is this. I can't get girls. I'm going to react. Feminism, same thing. After the first three weeks of feminism, there's all these fat women. Men don't pay attention to me because I'm fat. So I'm going to be a feminist and I'm going to, shove shit. I'm going to blame everything on the patriarchy. It's because they don't want to fucking lose weight and they don't want to be competent. right? It's all reaction. And you'll see reaction compared to what I'm getting to it. Let's look at anarcho-capitalism. Anarcho-capitalism makes sense even though you think it doesn't, Matt Forney and Roosh, because you're statist and despite as smart as you guys are in a lot of things, both of you would probably beat the shit out of each other to get Obama's cock in your mouth so that you could swallow the most amount of cum. Okay? Both of you are statist fuckers, and you cannot understand the concepts of first principles. Anarcho-capitalism comes from a first principle. First principle says you do not initiate violence against other people. That's not reactionary. That is a solid first principle. Right? Look at look at look at MGTOW. Women are bad. That's not a first principle. Okay? Not all women are bad. You should not initiate aggression against other people. See, that's a first principle. That's all the time. 
The MGTOWs say, well, women are bitches. Well, no, actually not all women are bitches. That's not true in a first principle, in what Stefan Mullen you would call a universally preferable behavior or a, a, a god damn it, what's the word I'm looking for? A, something that is universally true. Right? It is universally true that all humans metabolize oxygen. Okay? There are no exceptions to that. Universally true. With anarcho-capitalism, the non-aggression principle, the zero-aggression principle, however you want to call it, and the expanded zero-aggression principle, which states you will not initiate aggression against other people, nor allow aggression to be initiated against you, which allows you for self-defense. Again, there's a fucking, but well, well, what's the di this is where the statist would show up, but I, what about, what's the difference between initiating aggression and self-defense? We need a law. Well, no, if you're too stupid to know the difference between initiating aggression and self-defense, then you're supposed to be dead. See, evolution wants to get rid of you, but the state, the government, is keeping you alive because they know that you will vote for Obama because you're too fucking dumb to know the difference between initiating aggression and defending yourself. Anarcho-capitalism comes from a first principle that is always true. It is always wrong to initiate aggression against other people. You should never initiate aggression against other people first principle. Property rights. You should not steal other people's property. You should not take property that belongs to other people. That's all the time. It's not, you know, it's not, well, but we voted for this tax in the democracy and now we can confiscate people's wealth because I have democracy. No, wrong, wrong, motherfucker. First principles. Capitalism arises from a first principle. Capitalism is simply an extension of the respect of property rights. Because capitalism is people who have property, respecting the property rights of other peoples, making trades with other peoples for things of value. Capitalism arises from a first principle. That which you have, your property is yours, and you can trade your property with other people for their property, and thus you can create value for each other. As opposed to socialism. Socialism is reactionary. There are some people that have more than other people. Let's go take things away from the people who have more and give it to the people who have less, while of course lining our pockets with a percentage in the process. That's reactionary. Satanism, real Satanism, the as in Satanism as preached, preached, ha, in the Satanic Bible written by Anton LaVey. I've talked about the Satanic Bible before on this show. I want to talk about it again in the future. I think there's a lot of things in that book that are really valuable and very compatible with the anarcho-capitalist philosophy. The biggest complaint I have about Satanism is that it is reactionary. And Anton LaVey admits this in the preface of the book, I think it is. You know, he says that this all came out of his exposure to Christianity, the, the satanic philosophy, religion, whichever you want to call it, is his response to Christianity. It is reactive to Christianity. <clears throat> Christian, cri cri Christians, okay, fucking talk. And because it is, it was formed from this place of reaction to Christianity, it is in some ways flawed. Okay, because when Anton LaVey created the Satanic Bible, wrote the Satanic Bible, created the philosophy, because he was reacting very specifically to Christianity, that limited some of that, that, that limited his perspective, his worldview 
in creating the Satanic philosophy, as opposed to if he had started the Satanic philosophy, because you can go through the Satanic Bible and you can pull out these first principles. If he would have identified the first principles and then written the Bible from there, it would have been a different book than it is in which he started with Christianity is fucked up, and so here's where I'm going from that. That's the difference from in starting from a reactionary position versus starting from first principles. Again, the feminist, they're starting from a reactionary position. The patriarchy is responsible for everything bad. Fat women are really very attractive. Right. All of this this is all reactionary shit. There's no first principles. The virgin toes are, they're doing the same thing, like Forney says. And I was—I don't know anything about the early days of MGTOW and all this other shit. That's why following the links in this article might be of interest to you, because you might learn some shit. I'm sure in the first three weeks of MGTOW, there was a lot of first principles happening here. But now it's moved into this realm where it's all reactionary. I can't get a date. I'm a virgin toe, mig toe. I'm a 13th level mig toe or what the fuck ever. And it's that simple. It's not simple, but it is simple. When you're looking at any kind of worldview, ideology, belief system, trace it back to where it's coming from. Is its origin in first principles, like anarcho-capitalism and capitalism are, or is its origin in what's what's the way to phrase this? Is it does it originate from people reacting to something else that's going on? I, I feel like that's not really a, a great way to phrase that. I'm making this shit up as I go along in case you didn't know that. All right, let me go back to reading Matt Forney's piece here. Ha! <laughs> His piece. Ha! Woo! But I'm bunch. The mig. Uh, yes, the mig toe aversion to interacting with women also has a less pleasant parallel to radical feminism. In the 1970s, extremist feminists such as Andrea Dworkin argued for political lesbianism, where feminists only had relationships with other women, regardless of their sexual orientation. Dworkin's logic was that since men were oppressing women, feminists who dated men were literally fraternizing with the enemy. I wouldn't be surprised if some MGTOs started advocating political homosexuality in the future. After all, since women are evil, ball-cutting, divorce-raping succubi, the only safe relationships are to be had with other men. If you bang a dude, he won't jam you for child support or falsely accuse you of rape, and you certainly won't be worshipping pussy if you pack fudge. You'll just be exposing yourself to HIV and drug-resistant gonorrhea, but hey, you gotta take the good with the bad. I think Forney's got a point there. I, Yeah, I can see that coming. The masculine and the feminine. More to the point, MGTOW will never catch on for the same reason that political lesbianism never became popular. They both deny the fact that men and women want to be with each other. Yep. There it is, boys. You can be as fucking virgin toe as you want. I mean, again, in, anyone who's listened to this podcast lately, especially, you know, the last, what, Randy, how long ago did I start going on this trip about girls? And it's been a while. Look, I can I come on this podcast and I rip women a new asshole with the best of them. I scream and shout and I read the E. Jean letters and I make fun of the shit from Elle magazine. I can fucking trash women all day long, up and down, forwards and backwards. You can fucking give me a lobotomy, sew my mouth shut, and fucking cut my balls off. I could still trash talk women for fucking 23 hours out of the fucking day, okay? I can do this all day long, not a problem. Fact is, as I have said before, you've heard me say it right here on Stating the Obvious Podcast, 10 fucking years of CLSology, bitches. 10 fucking years of podcasting. You've heard me say it before. Women are the greatest fucking thing on the planet. Yeah, there's not many of them that are good. Most of them are really fucking low quality. Most of them are too stupid to pour shit up a fucking boot with the instructions written on bottom. 
But the ones that are good, they're really fucking good. Women, greatest fucking thing on the planet. Wouldn't want to live without them. Men and women fucking like each other. And I know those of you who make up weird fucking gender identities, you can't fucking stand. Well, I'm, I'm a sapiosexual, transsexual, bi, pan, queer, lesbian, hetero, flexible, pansexual fay or whatever. You're a fucking idiot. That's what you are. You're a fucking moron. Okay? You're a fucking moron. Shut the fuck up. Men and women like each other. And as much as the feminist and the femistatist and the fucking virgin toes and the perma virgins may hate all of this shit, normal, I, I know, there, there is no normal. That's gender bias, sexism, you're cisgender, homophobic. No, 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 there's such a thing as normal. And it's not you. And I know that hurts your part. I know you so desperately want to be normal. It's like you're all striving so hard to be normal, right? All the trannies and the weird panties and the sapies and the fucking tran... I said trannies already. They're all, they're all like, there's no such thing as normal. And then they're all struggling to be accepted as normal. Okay, if there's no such thing as normal, why are you trying to shove this shit down my throat all the time and make me think you're normal? So I saw this tweet repeat a tweet on on the twitterverse god damn i can't fucking think i saw this twitterverse thing the other day somebody pointed out this they they were repeating some of what the fuck ever here's the point the point it said something to this effect feminists argue that there's no that no feminists argue gender identity is a social construct but transvestites claim they were born with the mind of a woman both of these can't be true, right? If you can be born with the mind of a woman, then gender identity can't possibly be a social construct, can it? It's like, there's no such thing as normal. Well, then why are you struggling so fucking hard to have your fucking tranny, panty, what the fuck ever face self accepted by everybody as normal? Don't tell me there's no such thing. Of course there's such a thing as normal. All right, anyway. Getting off track, making fun. Fucking trannies, man. There are trannies all over OK Cupid. It's fucking ridiculous. Anyway, I bitched about that already. That was a couple of weeks ago. I'm, I'm moving on. Yes, men and women want to be with each other, as Matt Forney correctly points out. Mingtoes redefine all male female relationships into male servitude of women. Much in the same way that radical feminists recast relationships as men oppressing women. The problem with this is that the relationship between men and women is one of the most fundamental aspects of human existence. As Jack Donovan states in his book, No Man's Land, masculinity and femininity are defined in opposition to each other. Without one, the other cannot exist. Oh! Where have we heard that thought before? That wouldn't, no, there's no way in hell. There's no fucking way that that one fucking asshole guy, he does that podcast. What the fuck is it called? It, he's, he's been podcasting for over 10 fucking years. What's, I think it's called Stating the Obvious. Yeah, that, the, the great one himself, that arrogant bastard. Yeah, I'm pretty fucking sure he said that. Yes! You And see, Forney gets it. As, as dumb as Forney is, because we're getting to the part where Forney shoves Obama's cock in his mouth and starts swallowing cum. But as, even, as, even as statist and stupid as Forney is, <laughs> he is, goddammit. And what? Yes, I know. Even Forney gets this shit. Yes. Again, this is what the virgin toes and the feminists, they want to reject the idea that men and women need each other, that men and women like each other. And yes, Forney is absolutely correct. Jack Donovan is correct. I, I read, read... Oh, you wouldn't know. Never mind. The... Fuck. I think I read one of Jack Donovan's books. What the fuck? The... Da, 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 da. I can't remember the name. I think he's the author. It was a good fucking book. Shit. I hate when my brain doesn't work. Which is most of the time, apparently. Yeah. 
men, women, we are in opposite. I've made fun of this before, right? Men want to fix shit, you know, girls want to clean shit up, what the fuck ever, yada yada, back and forth. And it's when men and women come together, we balance each other out. And this, this ties in, I just talked about Rusha's post where he asked the question, can a woman make my life any better? Right? He wrote this whole post about that. I read, oh Christ. All right, thanks, dear. We're running out of time. Of course, that never happens on this cast either. Rouge talked about can, you know, his, his questioning of can a woman make his life better. And he made essentially the same point. And I agreed with him and I said this then. Right? The point of having a woman in your life, if you're a man, is to make your life better. And she makes your life better by balancing you out, by bringing things to the relationship that you don't have. And the opposite is true as well. If you're in a relationship with a woman, it's your job as the man to make her life better, to bring things to her she doesn't have, to put controls on her. So the two of you work together. You know, this is, this is synergy, the feminist in the HR department. So I talk about, it's synergy. You're a fucking dumb whore. Shut up. I had this, I have had this friend who she worked in the HR department. She was like, well, the, of course the soul lives on after you die because energy can't be destroyed and your soul is energy. Like, no, your brain activity is energy, but when your body dies, the brain doesn't have fuel anymore and energy fucking stops. Just, I said, yeah, energy is not destroyed, but it's not perpetual. If energy was perpetual, like you're trying to argue, then when your automobile ran out of fuel, it would keep fucking going. You're a dumb bitch, and she loved the word synergy. She's always talking about synergy, because in HR we have, we have synergy. Oh my God, like totally, like synergy. Anyhow. Yeah, men, women, need each other. All right, here we go. And where are we? All right. God damn it. All right, you have your choices. We can go long. <laughs> long. I said long. Or you can come back tomorrow. It's up to you. All right, that's... What, what time is it? Holy fuck. All right, we're going long. It's just a So I do want to wrap this up. Alright, we are going to play the outro music. I'm going to take a short... Well, I'm going to take a short break. We're going to play the outro music. And then, when the outro music is over, we're going to continue. We're going to finish analyzing this. You know the other thing I said? I'll, I'll just pull back. I'll do what I was originally going to do. I was going to do that as an anarchy moment. We'll just do that as an anarchy moment. When I say we, we'll do that as an anarchy moment. I mean me. Put that on on Wednesday, probably. All right, let's get back to the Forney article. The idea that men can go it alone, or that any form of relationship with women is pussy worship, is a perversion. And now here we here I get to rip Matt Forney a new asshole. Is a perversion of the flawed libertarian belief that the smallest unit of society is the individual. Yes, and here again, the statism rears its ugly head. 
this hatred you statists have for the individual. Yes, the small, this flawed libertarian belief that the smallest unit of society is the individual. Yeah, I mean, there are some people that are so fucking stupid, they actually think that you need trees to make up a forest. No, of course not. You don't need trees for a forest. Just like you don't need individuals for a fucking society. No, individuals have nothing. And this is why, of course, we can trample on the rights and the freedoms of individuals because we're doing what's best for society. Oh, democracy, isn't it wonderful? That's how we got where the fuck we are right now. Look how great this is working out. Both libertarians and virgintos ignore that humans are fundamentally interdependent. Jesus fucking, I am so fucking sick. This is the immature argument. This is the fucking immature, no. And first, when he says, this is the problem too with words. When he says libertarians, does he actually know what the word libertarian means? Because Matt, For I've seen Matt Forney's videos, he's kind of fat, and I'm not convinced he's actually had sex with a girl. He claims he has. I haven't followed him around my entire life. I don't know. I'm just saying. He's not that impressive. But does he actually know what the word libertarian means? When he says libertarian, does he mean anarcho-capitalist? Or does he mean Republicans who are calling themselves libertarians because Republican has become a bad word? Right? I don't really know. But the point is, is this, ignore that fun humans are fundamentally interdependent. No, you fucking fat statist fucker, you. Anarcho-capitalists are not the ones who are ignoring that humans are interdependent. You are. You're the one who thinks that the government can make laws and force people to do things and it will just magically happen. You're the ones who think the government can just give people free birth control, free health care, free food stamps. A libertarian, well, anarcho-capitalist, libertarians are, have become just, just like, just like MGTO has become virgins, libertarians have simply become Republicans. We anarcho-capitalists, we're the ones who recognize that all humans are interdependent. We're the ones who recognize that every law is less freedom. We're the ones who recognize that all this free shit that you get from the government has to be taken away from somebody else. We're the ones who recognize the value of personal responsibility and the consequences of taking action and making your own choices. We're not the ones who are on our knees fucking sucking Obama's cock and swallowing all of his cum because like Rush is like, oh my God, I took the wrong college degree and now the government should make everybody's choices for them so they don't make any mistakes. I'm, I'm patriarchy. Okay, the fucking lobbing your fucking worthless ass stupid fucking arguments at us. Fuck you, Forney. Fuck you. Fuck you. All right. Both libertarians and virgin toes ignore that humans are fundamentally interdependent. God damn it. No, we don't. We're the fucking only people that understand this, you dumbass. With countless relationships, laws. Always got to get them laws in there. We got to have laws. Without laws, everybody would run down the street raping and killing each other. It's only the laws that prevent that from happening. Oh my God, man, Forney, you're such a fucking idiot. With countless relationships, laws, customs, family connections, etc., binding us. A society of atomized, disconnected individuals is no society at all. Which is interesting. Matt Forney loves to pride himself on his logic. So he says that a society of atomized, disconnected individuals is no society at all. Well, it must be a society because he just called it a society of atomized, disconnected individuals. If it's not a society, then it couldn't be a society of atomized, disconnected individuals, could it? Come on, dude. Proofread your shit and try to think. All right, the smallest unit of society is not the individual, but the relationship between two individuals. Really? And how do you have a relationship between two individuals if you don't have individuals? And if each individual did not 
individually consent and desire to be a part of that relationship, how does the relationship exist in the first place? Oh, I know, I know. Maybe you could have Obama assign relationships to everybody. Because after all, you, you, you're you probably on board with Roosh on this. The government knows best. They could make all your decisions for you to keep you from making mistakes. Oh my God, wouldn't that be wonderful? If only Obama, in his quest to save people from their own mistakes with the support of Roosh, would, would just decide who should be in relationships with who. Whoa, everything would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Oh my God, it'd be like paradise on earth. Everything would be so, all the fat women could be teamed up with the virgin toes. Oh, we all be so happy. Oh. Lordy, lordy, I guess it's the vapors. Woo. God damn it, fuck, fuck, fuck. It's, it's the same thing I say about how can these how can these people like Roosh and 4D how can they be so smart? It is a serious question. How can they be so smart and be so fucking stupid at the same time? You can't have a relationship between two individuals without two fucking individuals. God damn it! But they think shit just comes out of fucking magic thin air. The government can just do everything for us. It's just magic. While Obama, he's magic. The reality is that as frayed as relations between the sexes are, men and women still fundamentally want to be together. Yep. Even the most Instagram-obsessed, passive-aggressive, narcissistic... Nar I can't say that word ever. Narciss narcissistic millennial girl desires a man to take her. And despite their whining, the average Dor Doritos munching mig migto would go pussy. God damn it. This is what happens when I talk too long. And despite their whining, the average Doritos munching migto would go pussy worshiper in a flash if a cute, agreeable girl was dropped in his lap. In the end, men going their own way is a passing fad, limited to a few bottom feeders who would have been shipped off to die on the battlefield in epochs less squeamish than our own. The de facto Marxism of most major MGTOW YouTube personalities, as evidenced by their pathological obsession with bashing trade cons, their autistic term for anyone who acknowledges the natural place of men and women, also renders them useless. Again, we're back to things Forney say. I completely agree with all of this. Despite their claims that there's no difference between the left and the right, MGTOWs almost never attack the misandriest feminist left, even though it's the left who holds all the power in the West. Their impotent rage against anything deemed trade con, even though trade cons have virtually no influence in society, indicates that MGTOWs are just as opposed to the natural order of humanity as the average pierce-lipped, easily triggered tumbarella. Tumbler, tum, tumbler, tumblerina. It's a good one, tumblerina. I like that. MGTOWs are the social justice warriors of the manosphere. And yes, that and that's where they've ended up. They may not have started there, but he's right. That's where they, every time I see some fucking, I'm a MGTOW. Oh, shut up. MGTOWs are the social justice warriors of the manosphere. Hysterical, intolerant of criticism, and driven entirely by emotion. This goes back to what I was talking about with reactionary versus first principles. Is it emotion driven? That's another way to look at it when I say, is it reactionary? Is it emotion driven, right? Zero aggression principle. The idea that you do not initiate aggression against other people. That is not emotion driven in any fucking way. There's no, ooh, I'm feeling emotional. I'm going to not kill other people. No, you don't kill other people because killing other people takes away from other people that which is most important to them, their other life. You don't initiate aggression against other people because you're, in initiating aggression against, even if you don't kill them, you're damaging their body. 
Their body is their property. It's the most important thing they have in the world. There's nothing emotional here. Whereas, yeah, the Megto's like, oh my God, I can't get a date. I'm emotional. The feminist, I'm, I'm, I'm fat. I'm fat and I have a mustache. I'm emotional. Socialism, there's other people that have more money than me. I'm emotional. Gender identities, I, I can't get a date. I'm, I'm, I'm a pansexual, sapiosexual, pierced lip, tattooed Instagram whore. I'm emotional. Okay, when you're looking at any kind of philosophy in your life, worldview, philosophy, ideology, whatever the fuck you want to call it, religion, does it have first principles or is it just an emotional response? Their vision of masculinity is one in which men turn inward, refusing to accomplish anything of value or engage with the world beyond crying on the internet. MGTO is no place for men who are proud of being men. Yeah, there it is. I mean, we, right now in our lifetimes, we've seen this happen. We've seen the whole men trying to be men go from men being men to men being little social justice warriors on the fucking internet. And Forney, despite his inability to understand the concept of individual humans, and again, this is, the, you know, this is always the justification for everything. We can have all these laws because fuck individuals, it's about society. You know, this is why, well, we have to protect marriage from the homosexuals because the relation... I'm surprised when Matt Forney wrote that, he thinks... Where's the, where's the quote? La, 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 Where is the quote? Where is the quote? <sighs> Fuck. Hold on, let me use this thing called search. Forney writes, the smallest unit activity is the smallest unit of society is not the individual, but the relationship between two individuals. I'm rather surprised he didn't say the relationship between a man and a woman, because pre I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm just trying to go from memory. I think Forney is opposed to homosexual marriage. But yeah, so maybe we have the, the government fucking pair everybody up. I'm telling you, that would, that would maybe make this guy... This whole, this whole hatred that you statists have of the individual while always wanting to do everything. Well, let's do what's best for society. Well, what's best for society is what is best for individuals. Because individuals make up society just like trees make up a fucking forest. Okay? You don't have society without individuals. I know this is hard for you statist fuckers to understand because you're so fucking terrified of personal responsibility and you're so terrified of making mistakes and you're going to go on the Roosh plan where the government is going to make my decisions for me because I'm so scared. Alright, I'm done. Stop. We're out. Thanks, guys. <laughs>